Hey guys, welcome back. So in today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to fill a tub surround. So in an ideal situation, somebody would actually shim out the studs so that you can run it a little bit tighter. And then there's just a really small gap to fill flat tape caulk. But in this case, we have, you know, about an inch and a half, like the whole flange to fill and tape. And it's pretty straightforward. As you can see, this one's already started. Uh, it got pre-filled and it's set. This was done like six months ago by the homeowner. So we're taking over here. And we've got this part right here that's built out and is gonna get corner beaded. So you'll get to see some of the process in action and we'll take it right up to the finish stage. Okay, so time to start pre-filling. And I'm going to be using some 40 minute Hamilton. Try and speed the job up a little. Oh, almost forgot, almost forgot. Need some uh, glue in there and leave it to the West Coaster to only have bottles of kombucha to mix the glue. Um, I'm just using tight bond. So it can just be any sort of carpenter's glue and it's thinned down and then I add a little bit here because I have a glossy paint that I'm going onto and I wanna make sure that it sticks. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm using sort of different tools than usual, it's because, well, I'm out of town, so I don't have my regular stuff. Okay, for pre-fill, it should be pretty thick, otherwise it'll just fall out and sag. It's a lot easier to work with if it's thicker. Only for the pre-fill stage. Doesn't have to be totally lump free, just close enough. As long as there's no dry material, just pack that super full. It's gotta be totally full. And then do your best to wipe it really flat. And it doesn't hurt to keep this tidy. This is probably gonna eat up this entire pan of mud. Takes a lot. If I had to do the entire surround, yeah, take a few mixes. Well, that was valuable stuff I just dropped. Yeah, that was definitely the better part of a whole pan. And just make sure you don't have any big lumps. I mean, you can also sand or scrape it down when it's dry or set, but you know, the tidier you have it right now, the better. And be gentle on the flange so you don't scratch it. They're fairly resistant, but not totally. Okay, so here it is. As you can see, it's filled in, it's flat-ish. Right, we're just trying to create a solid surface there. We'll let that set up before we move ahead. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. I think I've said that like three times in this video so far. Uh, mix, I'm using quick set. It's less susceptible to mold. And I'm also doing the flat taping with fiber fuse. Again, because it's less susceptible to mold. Uh, however, the drywall here is just regular drywall. So, I mean, I think ideally I would have chosen like green board or something, 
just to give it that extra bit of moisture resistance, but this will be good enough. And I think I was about to say that I mixed my quick set quite thin because with five of fuse, if it's too thick, you just tear the stuff and it's also really hard to get the joint compound out from underneath without tearing it basically. And once I get it to this stage, you don't have to do this, but today I am, I'm just skimming it really quickly to make it more embedded and to cover quickly on my next coats. So just make sure that when you are bedding it, that it's nice and tight to the tub surround. And on the one with the corner bead, it's the exact same thing. All right, let's get a quick look at this. Okay, so not much to see here. That's just the fiber fused one. That's fiber fused. And ended up using paper tape for those joints because I used paper tape for the corners anyways. And this drywall has been here for eight months and is showing zero signs of mold unprimed. So it's probably gonna be just fine after it all gets painted up. The only spot I would even consider worrying about is those very bottom corners down there. But as long as everything gets sealed up properly, it's going to be just fine. Okay, so the next day when it's dry, if you feel like you've left too much of a mess on it, kind of like I have right here, you can just wet it down with the sponge and wipe it off. At this point, you probably won't damage the tape too much if you do that. Just try not to rub too hard against the tape. And again, you can also take your knife, provided that it has pretty soft edges on it, and you can really gently scrape it off. If your knife is too new, what's gonna happen is it's going to scratch the flange if you're not careful. But I sanded the edges of this knife really well. And of course you always have the option of putting painter's tape along the flange. The tricky part is knowing where to put it because it's kind of annoying when you have painter's tape underneath the new tape that you've just overlapped onto it and then you have to cut it with a knife and pull it off when you're done. I usually like to have it a little bit, maybe like an eighth of an inch or less away from the edge of the tape so that you can just pull it off it's not buried under anything. So that's why I often will just leave it bare like this. And I just try and be careful with it. So as you can see, now we have a nice clean line that I can start filling against again. Just fill. You can try and keep your knife or your mud blob a little bit closer into the blade so it doesn't spread out so much. Like when I scoop this, it starts right here, but then I can give it a quick little shake and that helps stop, stop you from getting so much spilling over the edge. It's still gonna happen, but it doesn't have to be so much. And we'll go a little wider to bury that quick set edge. Now, I don't know what it is with the shape of this flange, but it's, it's not flat. So it's tending to want to just spill out the sides no matter what I do. Yeah, the angle's kind of weird. It's 
hard to see. But there is an angle that you can hold your knife that will clean off most of the edge of that mud. That's a little more advanced than most people are gonna be able to figure out. But hey, if it were easy, I wouldn't have a job. So you can also put it on like this to sort of help not get so much of it on the edge. It's slower, but it works. Um, <laughs> although I think you guys might just end up finding that no matter what, when the time comes to pull along the edge, if you're inexperienced and not steady handed, it's just gonna make a mess. But right now I'm just watching that edge get cleaned off. It's not that hard to do. It's just all about the right tilt of the knife so that that square edge of your six inch knife will clean off. It will clean it off as you pull it. It's the same as when you're coating an inside corner actually. So here's your close ups. It's probably a little grainy in terms of the lighting making the ISO way up. There it is from the top angle. I should also mention that at this point I'm now using all purpose light. So I've switched from the quick set. That's because it's easier to sand, easier to work with. Okay, so I did one final coat off camera, but it looked the exact same as what you've already seen. And now we're just left to sand this. You just want an angled sanding sponge so you can get right into that corner. And then you're going to want to really carefully sand this edge. So I'm not pressing it hard against it though, because otherwise what will happen is I'm going to scratch this all up. And it won't look like much, but you'll notice that instead of being glossy, it has a duller sheen to it. So we don't want to do that. We want to keep it glossy. So I'm not actually pressing against anywhere, but just inside the corner there. And we're kind of just carving out a little spot for paint and caulking to bridge that gap. So there really isn't much to it, right? Just sand. And then when you're done sanding, you're going to tape it off and paint it. I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's all sanded and cleaned up. So because I was actually filming two videos at the same time, I think I actually forgot to film any outro for the shower flange video. But here is the finished result. As you can see, it's a nice clean, sharp line. There's a little bit of stuff on the tub flange, which I would not worry about until after it's painted. So throw some tape along that edge so you don't get paint on the tub flange. Do a coat of primer, then you should caulk it. And then after that, do two coats of finish paint. Give that at least 24 hours to dry. And then at that point, you can gently clean off any remaining drywall mud off of the tub flange and you'll have a solid finished result. So I hope this video helps you guys get a really nice filled in tub flange. And be sure to check out my next video where I show you guys how I tackled this swirl texture. It's my first time doing it and I think it came out okay, but it was definitely a bit of a struggle figuring out the actual texture. And in my opinion, it ended up actually looking kind of interesting. So again, thanks for watching. Hope you're doing awesome and until the next one.